Hi everyone and welcome to this um, unscheduled stream. Um, I'll be playing a uh, arena at chess.com. It's a special arena because it's uh, Bigfoot uh, and his uh, celebration uh, tournament. So I'll make sure that everybody can go check out his stream as well. It's at chess.com slash TV. Uh, I think that's the link at least. Um, yeah, so it's a special tournament and, and I think it's a very exciting format because everybody who finishes on a prime number in the top 100 uh, will uh, win a prize. Uh, so uh, I, I think it's going to be exciting and it's going to be an opportunity for maybe people who wouldn't ordinarily be fighting for prizes to get a prize. So I, I think it's um, a very cool concept. Uh, and I'm gonna join. I'm gonna I'm gonna try my luck. And apparently according to the blog post I read, uh, there's one prize for first place and then there's uh, a couple of prizes for the uh, prime numbers. Uh, so apparently one is not a prime number and I didn't know this already. Maybe I'm just not paying attention in class. Um, but I always thought a prime number was a number that was not whole unless it was divided by itself or one. And if you divide one by one, you get one, right? So I would think I thought it was a prime number. I, I'd be happy to get some explanation as to why it's not. Anyway, so I'll, I'll be hoping to make first place uh, and worst case scenario, the backup plan is one of the prime numbers. Second, fourth, um, no, second, third, fifth, seventh, 11th, 13th, 17th. I'm, I'm basically asking questions. Um, Carlson did win HMW Life. Carlson did win. He blundered a piece in one move. It was insane. Uh, I was sitting in the studio and I was kind of saying that, well, this is good. And Gawain started thinking, so now he's out of his preparation. And then I was made aware of the computer evaluation, which was, let's just say, not in his favor. One is not a prime number because it would mess up a few definitions and results. Yeah, okay. It's kind of like, it's just like anything. Uh, what do you call this in English? Opaid E? I thought I knew what that meant. It can only be divided by itself. It is bigger than one. Okay. Well, I learned something new. I, I learned something new. Anton has Googled the prime numbers. I will need to finish 2nd, 3rd, 5th, 7th, 11th. 13th, 17th, 19th, 23rd, 29th, 31st, 37th. I'm basically hoping that I stay in the one digit area. So knowing kind of the two, three, five, seven, I'm hoping that's going to be enough. Uh, it's a um, pretty strong tournament at the moment. So maybe I'll have to look at the, the uh, double digits as well. It's a um, three minute, no increment um, tournament. I can do the, yeah, I'll try to get the participants list. Let's do another screen capture. Do the participants list. Go for 97th. I mean, that would be, extremely tricky i would think because you would have to do some 
yeah no i mean at some point it's just going to be luck right and tie breaks going your way if you're not aiming for first place first place you can kind of go for but other than that HMW Life saw Carlson's position after 14 moves and liked him. Clearly, you did not see the position after he blundered a piece because then he was a piece down. So that was that was not not good. Are you getting subscription emotes? Yes, I am getting those. Um, you know. Firstly, when I learn kind of what they are, uh, but secondly, I'm, I'm so busy with the uh, Tata Steel tournament. Uh, so I haven't really gotten that prioritized. But by sub emotes, do you mean the kind of funky things you can put into the chat or the symbol next to instead of the subscription? I guess sub emotes are the ones you can put into chat. I think maybe I have one. I think maybe I have one. I, I have it somewhere on my computer, but I don't know how to actually enter it into the system. Uh, Danny is on that list, but I don't think he's playing. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Danny's playing. I don't know. Uh, yeah. So the participants list, we have uh, another Norwegian, Lars Oskar Hauge. He's uh, ranked third. We have a uh, Moldovan guy I have never heard of. We have Hungarian, pretty strong player, ranked fourth. And some Russian guy. It's chess, there's always some Russian guy. Some Russian guy is pretty good at chess. Marcus asks, Magnus played g4. How did he not consider f4 in response? I would think that would be the first thing that came to mind. I think Jonathan Rosen had a pretty good explanation at Twitter. Um, and he basically said that g f4 is such a strategically um, undesirable move that Magnus may have just kind of not considered it because he thought, well, that that ruins your pawn structure. It it means that you can never go e4. And then he just missed the fact that after f4, his connection with the knight, his bishop no longer protects his knight. Uh, so to, to, I think that's the best explanation uh, that he just, he thought it was positionally ugly and just ma made this, huge blunder I think it's the only way to explain it HMW life is asking for can you stream Civ 6 yeah I don't know I, I actually I actually feel maybe I will at some point but I really need to practice beforehand at, at this point I would maybe be comfortable doing some Civ 5 but Civ 6 I, I need to at least finish one game to be sure that I understand what's going on. Yeah, on, uh, Honors says in the chat that Magnus confirmed it was just a blunder. But even though it's a blunder, there's a logic to it, right? Because it's not like he made the blunder thinking I'm going to lose a piece. So the logic is that he didn't consider this move because it looked ugly positionally. I think that's the best explanation. That Thomas Thomas asks, what's your favorite type of Civ victory? Yeah, I only win on science. I'm one of those boring guys. Just science every single time. I never managed anything other than science, I think. Not on the proper levels. I kind of did like the uh, beginners levels and tried to make some cultural victory, but with strong, um, 
with strong engines. Uh, no, with the strong. Well, they both. I, I guess it's not stronger, but it gets some advantages at the beginning, right? Uh, Check to the King asks, will you come to London Classic? Maybe. I don't know. I have some very good memories from the London Classic. Every time I have gone to London, I have won. I, I've, I've been twice and I won the, the Open Tournament both times. So I have some very good memories of London. Anton asks, will you ever stream Blindfold again? Those videos are so awesome. And actually, the, it's interesting you say it. Because I have my calendar. Yeah, I, I would show it to the screen, but it's actually some of it is secret. But um, I'm planning to add a stream on January 30th. And I'm thinking I should do either puzzles or Blindfold Bullet. And so I'm thinking, since Anton, you're requesting the uh, blindfold videos, I'm just going to write down Anton's request blindfold. So I'm going to do a blindfold stream on January 30th. And I'm, I'm going to um, I'm going to put it down on um, in my events thing on Twitch. Blindfold bullet, please. Anton, your wish has been granted. Set the date. I will be expecting you. Uh, HMW Life asks, was Magnus late for class at high school or you? No, I was never, never late. Magnus was late a couple of times. Sometimes we would sit and play blindfold during class. That's pretty geeky. I mean, it's beyond geeky, really. Can we get a bit of both, says HMW Life. So you're looking for some uh, puzzle streams as well. I can probably fit that in at some point, but it may have to be in February. So blindfold, bullet, and uh, puzzle solving. I'll make sure to do those. Uh, check to the king. What are your recommendations for players looking to improve below 2,000 feet? A? My just go-to response is um, puzzles and blitz. I, I really think that puzzles and blitz take you uh, pretty far. Johann Sebastian is trying to get all of you away from my stream and go to Large Oscars instead. Uh, I'm just going to mention that at chess.com. Now it's three minute blitz. Three minute blitz we're looking at. It starts in a minute. At chess.com slash TV, you can uh, see Bigfoot stream. He is the one organizing this. Uh, and he's having a stream with Danny Wrench. So um, go to chess.com slash TV if you want to check that out. Uh, yeah, we're having some discussion about Johann Sebastian's trying to advertise for other streams. I actually did a little bit of research on Twitch culture, and it actually says that trying to advertise other people's stream in the chat is considered very rude. So you shouldn't be doing that, Johann Sebastian. Johann Sebastian is on the Norway Gnomes team, and we won the uh, first... Uh, round in the Pro Chess League and we have taken the lead in the Eastern Division but now it's about to start in five seconds so I'm going to remove the participants list and we will start and in the first game you always play the one closest to you in rating so I'm getting the very tough Russian guy in the first round so let's play something solid I think I would be happy to make a draw. 
will do the Queen's Gambit declined. He goes Queen C2. I don't know what to do, but I guess when he moves his uh, queen away from the... Um, Uh, I probably should have taken this one as well. Now he can take on d5. So we're playing against the isolated queen's pawn. I got control over the uh, d5 square. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I got a good opening. I may have done something wrong. I'll go a6 trying to provoke a4. I'm not sure what I do with a3. <laughs> Marius is asking for the best exercises to actually lose chess level. Uh, and he's asking whether I think four player chess or <laughs> or ultra bullet is the best way to be worse at chess. I don't know. I had my ultra bullet de debut um, yesterday. I tried some 15 second games with uh, with the Lash Oscar. And man, that was just brutal. It's just trickery and playing quickly that's basically the only thing you need to know there check to the king you're so sweet i hope one day i can get a picture with you that's very sweet did i just blunder something Not paying attention anymore. <sighs> hey yo, Lin Lam. This is the prime number prize tournament, and I'm very happy because I am not getting a prize <laughs> if I continue playing like this. Uh so if I went queen f5, he had some knight h6 check. It was all pretty annoying. Yeah, what to do. I really thought it's a new day. It's a new chance to play decently. But no, I, I think maybe I'm just going to resign. Yeah, I'm just going to resign. Let's do the next game. Oh, another 2700. Are you kidding me? And another black game. This must have been very, very bad luck. And I had such a good position in the last game. Another Queen's Gambit. Another very strong player from Hungary, Imre. Let's do castles. Ninety seventh, here we come, says Anton Squared. Yeah, no, I know. I at this point, I'm. There's actually. There, there's actually three hundred players in the tournament. Uh, and if I start off with two losses, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking that maybe 97th might even be out of reach. But I'll try to make 97th. I played this in um, a tournament during Christmas. The Rilton Cup. This exact, I, I think I had this exact 
uh, position. And then Eric Hansen played this against me. And um, and afterwards. So somehow I've been ending up in this position all the time. But it's about striking out against the white center. And I did. I succeeded. And now I'm putting my pieces into reasonably good squares. And then we're going to do some trading. We're going to trade some pieces. I think I'm, I'm playing too slowly, actually. I'm not trusting my instincts. I should just booyah. Booyah. It just, it feels to me like he's not playing very well, but he's rated 2700. So how can I kind of with what authority can I say that he's not playing very well? This just seems like such a poor move to me. Yeah, I saw Magnus's game today. That was pretty insane. Pretty sick stuff. Magnus not impressing ever anybody well i i guess to some extent he was impressive because i mean coming back from that is just wow but on the other hand landing in that kind of trouble is just also wow not very good uh, i really want to sack a piece i know that i shouldn't but i really want to i'm not gonna do it ah uh, this was just a terrible move I'm going to go here and then somehow attack this. Success. Actually, when I played g5, he could have played h4. Because I wasn't really threatening g4 because of queen g6 check. And now I'm getting this one. This guy is really not playing very well. I mean, he has a 2500 rating. No, 27. And he's not playing well at all. It's very strange. But he's going to flag me. He's going to flag me. I mean, everybody, whenever I get a good position, I just end up getting flagged. So now I'm going to play really quick. Really quick. No more flagging the hammer. If I don't win this, I'm going to be seriously mad. <laughs> I'm going to be so, so mad. You just know he's going to flag me, right? No, I really messed it up. Because now it's unclear. No, it's genuinely unclear. So slow, and it's so sad.
Are you kidding me? That was that was just weird. That was weird. So I got the win and I'm getting another 2600. And I deserve that win. I mean, the other guy was playing terribly, but I I also deserve to get flagged. So I I don't know. I both deserving and undeserving at the same time. Okay, so this guy is just playing a line that is well known to be just poor for black, but he just he just goes, "Oh, give me a poor position." And I'm happy to give you a poor position. Queen B1 was not a good check, says Marius. Yeah, I, you're probably right. Probably right. But this guy is not playing very well either. I mean, come on. I'm just... The only thing I'm asking myself is how am I going to flag? How am I going to flag? So he takes back with a pawn. So I can just take an exchange of queens and I'm a pawn up and I have a better knight. I have a better pawn structure. Wow. And this guy already has nine points. How is that even possible? He won two more games while I was playing. You get three points for the next one and then four. He actually managed to win two games while I was playing the 2700. So I'm getting 2600s every single time. I wonder if this is going to keep up. I wonder also whether that affected his opening. He got so used to kind of just really crushing people that he wasn't paying enough attention. I really think that might, may have played a role. And I missed knight g5 check. That was also pretty poor. I'm got, not going to miss it one more time. Um, check. Looks good. Looks good. I have... Uh, <laughs> Rook ending with two pawns up. And the guy is not going to resign. No, he's going to play on. The rook ending with two pawns down. He's going to try to make a draw. I mean... Is there really anybody who thinks I cannot win this? I'm, t I'm not that low on time even. I'm, I'm Now I'm three pawns up. Three pawns up. I'm not this bad at chess. I think really think you should resign. Yeah, thank you. He got a head start on me. He got a head start. But now I broke his streak. So now he's back to two points per game. So it's very important for me to break streaks. So I, that, Actually, even though I lost the first game, it doesn't matter that much. Because um, are you going to play 95? No. It doesn't matter that much. It's hammer time. No, I think that's for checkmates only. No, I we made some rules about that. I think we said hammer time is checkmates only. But I can say booyah whenever I beat somebody strong. Even Magnus would resign that against you. I don't know. Three points down. We saw what happens with with uh, Magnus being a piece down. He just plays on. Pretends like nothing ever happened. He might play on with three points down. I don't think he would succeed. But that's another story. Tied for ninth place. That's not a prime. No, but there are there's some tie breaks involved. So maybe I can get 11th place on tie breaks. This is the weird tournament where you're hoping for <laughs> poor tie breaks. 
Hammer, are you sure that Dr. Drunkenstein is Magnus? Yes, I'm sure. Uh, it was confirmed by uh, Lee Chess. It was confirmed by Magnus on Snapchat. Uh, it was... There, there's just no doubt. It, it was Magnus Point. And uh, Anton Squared has uh, taken the responsibility of being the chat standings update. There's still uh, one and a half hours left, um, but um, we'll take whatever good news we can get. So uh, Anton reports, I just fell to 11th place, which is a prime number. So big celebrations in the Hammer Camp as he falls two places to 11th. Magnus has a Snapchat? Wow! No, it's not like he's a kid in the 21st century. <laughs> yeah, he has a Snapchat. But I don't think it's public. Yeah, my bishop is not too good. It's having trouble attacking stuff. This guy is playing pretty good. What is that flag? Cambodia? Cambodia. He's playing pretty well. I don't think I'm worse. But I don't think I'm better either. I don't think I'm better. We'll have to do some... Magnus strategies. Just play around the pieces and see what happens. I should have gone h4. Basically, whenever your opponent goes h4, you should go h5. Especially when you have the king like this. Because he, he's always trying to go h5. And then he goes h6 and suddenly there's some threats against the king. Thank you. Threats against the king. Maybe something going on. Hmm. Now this move doesn't work. Ah. Check. I'll set a trap. And if the trap doesn't work, I don't know what to do. Okay, the trap didn't work. Ah, I'm winning a pawn. Excellent. Sometimes you just follow a va variation and you realize that there's just this one move you didn't see that's just good. This is one of those cases. Suddenly I realized I'm winning a pawn. And we get another rook ending. Good news, because I've been practicing in the previous game, and it was a big success. But I don't want his rooks to get active, so probably I should go attack something. Ooh, tricky guy. He's very tricky. He's pretty good. And I'm getting a low on time. He's pretty good. No, I'll have to do this anyway. And now he's threatening checkmate. I don't want to fall for that. So let's go here. Yeah, now I got you. I got you. I'm going to flag you. But I'm going to do some stuff. In the meanwhile, in the meantime, go back. Thank you. Oh, come on. I could have taken the rook. <laughs> I was just so obsessed with getting those, those pawns.
Okay, I won the game, but it was a very tough game. Very tough game. And I get another game against the 2600. What is going on? Is this karma? But on the other hand, this guy did not play very well in our last game. So probably there's nothing to be afraid of. I should be able to beat this guy. But I feel like the parries are being somewhat strict. You get the opponents you deserve, says Midnight Fox. Yeah, I suppose. Okay. I mean, what is this guy doing? Does he really think this knight is going to survive? That was very ambitious. I think that's the most courteous thing I can say about that move. Very ambitious. Yeah. Thank you. Free piece. I'll take it. I'm happy to take pieces. Danny is a head of hammer. Well, I, I think I'll have to live with that. Find it in some... It's very... It's a personal disappointment. But I'll live with the fact that hammer... No, that Danny is ahead of me in the... In the standings. I'm not playing this very well, am I? <laughs> I'm basically being the anti-Magnus. I'm just a clean piece up and I'm making a mess out of it. Proper mess. I mean, this is not clear at all. And these two pawns are just so strong. What happened to my piece up? Ah. Uh. Wow. No, seriously, those pawns are really strong. I don't see how to play around them. Okay, this is just gonna... I'm actually going to have to give the piece back. I'm going to have to give the piece back and he's played bishop c3 just trying to prevent me from giving the piece back. He's actually playing for a win with the piece down and I'm getting low on time and basically letting him. Okay, what's your next move? H6, just <laughs> stay still and see what happens. Yeah, no. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. This is just, I, I was a clean piece up and now I'm scrambling to make a draw. It's pretty, pretty sick. Pretty sick. Okay, now I might start playing for a win again. I might start playing for a win again. I have a good bishop in the diagonal. This is not the best bishop ever, but I'll move it, try to exchange it, I'll be fine.
Time trouble again. But that is my number one reason for losing chess games. Time trouble. It's a very convenient excuse, if nothing else. Thank you. Oh, no, it's not checkmate. <laughs> I thought it was checkmate. That's pretty poor. Twenty fourth place. <laughs> We're taking on. I don't like your updates, Anton. I'm playing twenty six hundred rated guys. I cannot win at the same speed as the fifteen uh, hundreds. Twenty fourth is fine as long as kind of I get into an area in which there are a lot of adjacent prime numbers. And I got the twenty seven. Are you kidding me? So Danny has been telling me about how that chess.com is trying to make the arenas as competitive as possible. So you're supposed to be playing a lot of the people around the same rating as you. Uh, my only problem is that whenever I play somebody uh, close to my rating, I end up spending so much time. Because it's it's tough games. I mean, I'm playing very tough opponents. And that means that sometimes it's good to be high rated. And a lot of the time, it's just not. Uh, it doesn't work out in your favor. So that's... I suppose that's how it goes. But it's tricky. This might be a terrible move, but I was, I thought he wanted to go queen e7. So I'm trying to kind of stop his ideas. Maybe I should have gone bishop c4, because now he gets bishop e6. Then it's not really clear what I'm achieving with my weird exchange of things twenty seven hundred and five points yeah no I mean he had a very tough opponent for previously in the tournament uh, so he he's got a bumpy ride so far and ahead of him okay I'm gonna do something weird with my bishop Oh, he can just take. Yeah, I was kind of thinking he wouldn't exchange queens. And then I realized I cannot take back with the rook because of the bishop h6 stuff. So now I exchanged queens and I didn't really want to exchange queens. And now he's going bishop f8. And suddenly I'm... Oh, he didn't go bishop f8. I think that exchange, I think, was good for me. Because now my king gets some sort of safe haven. And I can do something uh, advancing my pawns. Yeah, no, I'm... The latest development I approve of. Take on g3, take on e6, and then knight d5 check. Could be good. Could be bad. 
I'm hoping it's good. Bishop here. That's a strange move. Take, take. Bishop e4, maybe? Take, take. Bishop e2. Take, take. No. Take, take. G4. I guess I have to decide whether I want to give up a bit knight on this one. But why wouldn't I? It's a knight. I get a bishop. Ah, he was disconnected for the entire time I was thinking. I could have gotten a lot of seconds there if I had just made my move. I'm thinking he might go knight f6. But then I have g5, so. Actually, maybe he could have exchanged and taken on h3. No, then b7 is hanging. I don't know. I think it's looking good for me. It's looking very good. Once again, I'm playing a brilliant game. And there's a big question. How am I going to mess this up? Because I just know I'm going to. <laughs> just feels like something I always do. But how can I mess this up? This is looking so, so good. This is looking so, so good. This might be one of those situations in which I cannot mess up. Hammer time! Checkmate! We have a checkmate! Hammer has beaten the Hungarian guy twice. And I am number. If rook h1, then king g8. I, I wasn't too comfortable with. Famous last words. Just as somebody says, the sound is a lot too, too, too low, I start screaming. But it's screams of joy. It's a very good day. Yeah, I need to play quicker. Because my intelligence, uh, would, by which I mean, of course, um, Anton Squared. No, Anton. Um, yeah, Anton Squared. My intelligence is telling me that I am way behind. Even after those games, because I end up playing all these really, really tricky guys. And then my games end up being pretty long. And having long games is not something you hope for when there's a format where quick wins are rewarded so what am i going to go for here i'm going to go for the quick win and my queen is attacking in two directions and my rook is joining the party Sixteen, number fourteen. None of those are good. Even numbers are not very good in a prime number prize tournament. So there's that. I'm gonna play really quickly to try to uh, beat the toad of the sky, and I blundered. Wow, I blundered. That's not good. This may make the toad think that he has chances to win the game and to be honest he might be right he has check and then queen c1 
queen c1 i missed queen c1 attacking my rook attacking something here i'm actually in big big trouble big trouble maybe i should start thinking no go defense with the queen and then we're gonna let these guys do the checkmating and we're hoping for rook b1 yeah rook b1 though that is my hope because now there's a bishop coming taking the rook the toad has resigned i get six no four points and i'm uh, gaining traction in the standings and another 2000 player as long as i avoid the 2600s i think i got enough of those uh, so far so I'm happy to avoid and I'm happy to play the Karu Khan the aggressive very aggressive black opening it's a joke it's a joke very important update from uh, Anton squared I'm ahead of Danny Danny wrench is no longer a superior arena chess player I have overtaken him in the standings but on the other hand I'm in trouble against Homer I'm actually worse I think well maybe not anymore a4 was not I wasn't really playing a6 to go b5 I was just doing it so that my I would take the b5 square and give my king a safe square on c7. So when he plays a4, it's both a weakening of his position and he's losing time. Let's come with the rook. And now I'm even guarding my extra pawn in a very good way. Although I blundered knight d6. It's very difficult playing blitz chess without blundering stuff. In my experience. Go after this pawn. Go after it take it you know you want to yeah i was actually hoping he wouldn't do that <laughs> some reverse psychology um i'm i'm in big trouble now that pawn was really important some reverse psychology of taking the pawn did not work out he took it anyway and now i'm just I went from being a pawn up to just having a ruined position. But it's blitz. So I'm going to flag him. I think that is the... Whenever you're worse in, cha in blitz, just flag your opponent. It solves the problems every single time. Who is Bigfoot? Asks Silver Surfer Gorilla. And Bigfoot is the organizer of this tournament. And he's one of the uh, chess.com streamers. So he's one of the um, the guys who will be providing all sorts of live chess entertainment for your viewing pleasure. And he's right now having uh, a, a stream uh, hosting the tournament with uh, Danny Ranch and uh, talking about why he's choosing to celebrate his uh, Twitch partnership by hosting this prize tournament. A prize tournament where basically anybody can win as long as you finish with a prime number you are a potential winner. Yeah, he's gonna go back, isn't he? He's a very tricky guy. Very tricky guy. I'm going to go here and then I'm going to fork. Fork. Ah, oh, 
That's very clever. That was very clever. I missed that. Now he has a passed pawn guarded with his bishop, supported by his knight. That was very clever of him. That was very good, actually. I'm in trouble. Yeah, he's playing pretty well. I think I'm going to get him on time but that's the only way i'm gonna i'm gonna manage it's another win labrio asks what shampoo do you use that's slightly personal no I'm third. I'm third. It's a prime number. I'm third. Fantastic news. And I'm one point behind first place. So that's also pretty good. There's some kind of way you're supposed to play these positions, but I never really remember how. I don't think this was it. <laughs> I think I misplayed that somehow. Uh, there I had 95. 95 maybe was strong. Let's do it now. Give the knight on f7, says Marius. Actually, I might. But I, I don't... The scary thing about giving the knight on f7 would be that people would think that I make moves you suggest. And I think that could set a very dangerous precedent. But on the other hand, yeah, I'm seriously tempted to do it. I might do it later, but for now I'm going to avoid the, the precedent of making moves that are suggested. Give the knight on f7 just like Carlson. Just like Carlson. Well, that n taking on f7 would be a sacrifice. I mean, to do something like Carlson, I would need to make a mistake. Not really realize that. Okay, but at this point, I'm going to do it. As requested by the audience, I have taken on f7. Let's see what happens. Not actually sure myself. Queen e8, I can take. Uh, probably queen e8 is a good move. A uh, queen e8, I may have bishop takes h7. Wow, that's a big move. That's a big move. Queen e8, bishop takes. Okay, so queen e7. Does a lot of the same things, except now bishop takes here is not possible. That was probably a good move. That was a good move. Called it. Marius is on fire. Ninety-five possible says GM moves. Yeah, I, I kind of saw that. It's why I'm not being very enthusiastic about my position at the moment. Because now H six, he's gonna force the knight to commit, and then, okay, that was not a good move. Ah, I should have gone f4. Maybe I should have gone f4.
On the other hand, maybe if I give my bishop, I get three pawns. I really don't want to give my bishop. My bishop feels like a very valuable piece. But for another pawn, I will do anything for another pawn. So let's take it. Three pawns is quite a lot, but his bishop pair is really strong. So I'm guessing I'm better, but it's not entirely clear. F4, possibly you want a piece, uh, but I was concerned about bishop c5 in some lines. Um, out of the corner of my eye, I saw that possibility and it, it made me reconsider the f4 move. Bishop c5 check, something to g4, could be annoying. How am I going to push my pawns forward? I don't know. Maybe I should just take this. Just take it and retreat. And he's kind of stuck. He's pretty stuck. But on the other hand, how do I go forward with the pawns? Ah, he helped me out. I was really not sure how to make progress, but I think that exchange of the rook really helped me out. So now I'm gonna push the pawns on both sides and hopefully at some point I will queen one of them. Although it's not very clear. I mean, his bishop pair is so strong, so strong. And he's playing pretty well. And he's playing quickly. Ah, there he blundered his bishop. I didn't exploit it. There he blundered his bishop again. Once again, I <laughs> didn't see it. And now he blundered the bishop for a third time. And this time... I picked it up. So let's check the standings. I'm in uh, fourth place. That's not very good. That is not a prime number. I will make sure to get off that fourth place as soon as possible. Now we're playing some old school stuff. Well, I, I, old school is not accurate, but this is what I played as white when I was a kid. So to me, it feels like old school. Apparently this line is very popular among all the, the guys who play this line as black. Because every time I play this, I end up playing against this structure this idea third time's the charm says anton and marius new school hammer school of chess essentially I'm not quite sure why I took the pawn on e5. It felt like a good idea at the time, but now I'm really not sure. Kind of regretting it. But let's see what happens. I'm guessing that this knight is not going to survive the game. Because now I go bishop h3, I have h3, I have a lot of moves causing this knight a lot of hurt. I'm going to go h3, I think. Maybe bishop h3 was better. But on the other hand, maybe he has some clever thing.
outpost. I got him thinking. Just taking the knight. This is the advantage of having bishops. Is that you kind of choose when to give up your bishop. And in this case, I chose to give up my bishop when I was ready to get the knight to uh, d5. But on the other hand, knights are not as good as bishops. So I'm starting to regret the decision I made to give up my bishop. Because now his bishop is causing me some trouble. And when I say some trouble, I really mean a lot of trouble. It's really annoying what he's doing. I think I'm going to have to play this move. I might get checkmated. At some point, he could go knight g4. And my king is not really a happy camper. My plan right now is to go queen d3 to take the g3 square so that I can go f4 next move. And I think as long as I get f4, I should be safe. I force his queen back and his knight, oh. Okay. Yeah. Fork the king and queen at some point. I don't think so. There's a bishop on h4, which is always protecting e7. So I think forking the king and, and queen should be uh, tricky. Let's do fianchettos. Mostly because fianchetto is such a funny word. Apparently in Italian, it's supposed to be fianchetto. But I'm so ruined by the English pronunciation that I cannot possibly switch. Fianchettos. And now I'm getting my knight to f5 and then to d6 and then to e4. So he gets to play g5. I'm not sure it was very clever of me to allow that. But at least I get my knight to e4. So now he needs to go g5 to stop f6. And I might play f6 anyhow. No, he chooses to blunder a piece. Um, so I would advise that he did not make that move. I think he shouldn't have blundered a piece. And he agrees because he resigned the game immediately after having made that mistake. So how are we looking? Are we on a prime number? Yes, second place. This is basically the advantage of being in, in fighting for first place in this tournament is that um, there's a lot of prime numbers nearby. So you can get into first place, you can get second place, you can get third uh, and all will be rewarded. This is interesting. Maybe I can go knight e4 if he goes bishop a3.
I don't know if this is good, but it'll be a pawn sacrifice, I'm thinking. Takes on d5, takes back, takes on c5, then knight a5. I'm trying to control some, some light squares. I'm not sure it's very good, but that's what I've played. This, I think, was inaccurate, because now he loses his right to castle. which I felt like I should be able to exploit. Let's go with the Isolani pawn so that I get good control over c4. Ooh, I think he really should have gone g3, queen, king, king g2. I think on e2, his king is really gonna feel, feel the draft, so to speak. Right now I'm threatening to take back and if he takes on b6, I'll go queen c4. So he just gave back the pawn, but now I got the pawn back and are under very good circumstances. Very good circumstances. I'm just going to go into the end game. Rook b1, I go check and queen c4. Now the knights are coming, both of them. Now the rook. This is a hammering. Ah, the, the bishop is even trapped on a3. The bishop is trapped. There's a lot of hurt. Oh. <clears throat> I did not see that move. <laughs> um, never mind. There's still some fighting left. Wow, what's going on? Check. He must have missed that. Oh, it's a John Hammer original quote. Oh, I, I had not seen my bishop hanging. I thought he was just giving his knight out of desperation. But it turns out he had an idea. But I countered his idea and now I'm looking at two knights complimenting the queen. Not that they needed the queen in order to catch these ill-behaved rooks. And now if rook takes d3, then checkmate. He saw that. But now I'm two knights against one rook. And checkmate next move. But I won on time. No hammer time there. And we have another 2700 matchup against Imra. So, so far I have two wins against this guy. So he might be a bit upset about that. I would think. I'm going to take this. Looks like a free pawn. Probably it's some kind of well-known gambit continuation, but being ignorant about such things, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go for it. Looks interesting and I'll play it.
This is interesting. Very weird stuff happening. Weird pawn structure, weird king position, weird, well, everything basically. Queen d5 is tempting. But on the other hand, what is he really doing? Now I'll go queen b5, I think. And then knight d7, because then I get his queen off the... I did not see that move. That's a good move. And I'm really low on time. I'm really low on time. And this just, my pawns are somewhat worse than his pawns. So what to do? I'm really not sure. I should really play it faster because basically this line is what I was considering as I was thinking. It's not like I considered anything new. I just spent a lot of time before deciding on going for the line. I was going to play anyway. Now we got some stuff going on. Still a very strange position. Ah, that move I hadn't seen. There's a reasonable chance he's going to flag me, but it was an interesting game. And by reasonable chance, I mean he's definitely going to flag me. Uh, I, he might actually checkmate me before it ever gets that far. Uh, what's going on? Ah, that was a mistake. Okay, good game. Interesting. Interesting stuff. I played too slowly. I wasn't really trusting my, my instincts. Ah, oh, what is flagging? Asks Lee. And that is when you lose on time. So I was, I was, I, I actually may have been better with my rooks attacking and then I chose to go into this end game. Uh, I could have sacrificed a pawn instead, but regardless, it would have been uh, tricky making a draw uh, because I was so low on time. Rest in peace, streak. Yeah, I'm not so happy about that. Not so happy about losing the streak. So now since I lost the streak, 
I get two pin points for winning a game. Whereas if I had kept my streak, I would have gotten four points. So actually losing the streak is not that big of a disaster. Um, but one of the problems is that he gets a streak. But I, I suppose at this point with him having such a difficult time already, him losing the streak might not, might not make that much of a difference. I'm in fourth place. That's basically the only <laughs> non-prime number in my vicinity. So that's not too good. I better either lose some games or win some games. So I guess it's a win-win situation going on. Queen b5 was an inaccuracy. Are you saying that as you're saying that or are you saying that based on computer? <laughs> Anton is really on fire today, enlivening up the chat. Now, correctly, of course, saying that um, fourth place is the first loser. And that is true. And I'm trying to solve it because now I'm getting outplayed by some Madagascan. No, it's a Belarus. Belarusian guy. And I'm worse. I'm, I might even be much worse. This is not a good position for black. Oh, this is not good. I'm going to go knight d7, basically gambling that he will not go rook here. And I don't know why I would gamble something so silly. Of course he goes rook there. Yeah. Yeah, I might lose this one. I don't see how to get out of this mess. without playing a very depressing move, at least. Rook a7 is also a very good move. I really should take on c5. I'm not sure why I didn't do it this this move. I should get rid of some white pawns and try to make a draw. It's kind of t tricky resigning yourself to trying to make a draw against a 2000 player. But if there's ever a, a time it has been the right call, this is it. Okay, now he made some mistakes. He made some mistakes and we're back in it. We're back in it. And he thinks that he's going to win on time. But I refuse to be flagged yet again. Uh, instead, he took one of my pawns. <laughs> That's clever. That's much smarter than what I was. I wasn't really paying attention there. And he got his knight back. So now with 20 seconds on the clock, I need to flag this guy. And he's playing pretty well. So flagging him is going to be really, really tricky.
Why did I? <laughs> that was a poor, poor move. That was a very poor move. Ah, he's just going for the draw. Okay, I'll make the draw. You do realize that if you lose some time, you might lose the game. I wonder if the server will give me the game. Because in theory, I, I should win if he loses some time because there's possibility of creating a checkmate. If he were to get a new bishop when queening his pawn, I could construct a checkmate. So in, in normal uh, feeder rated games, I would be given a win in this situation. It's something you should be aware of. Okay, I'm going to play Carlson-esque. This is approved by Magnus Carlson as played against... Okay, that's not a good move. Okay, so Mr. Hansen playing with the black pieces has very effectively demonstrated how not to play in this line. Uh, and basically jumped head first into something that's unpleasant for uh, for black but now i just returned the favor in a big way wow i might actually be steaming i don't know this might be this might be me steaming On the lead chest, this is a win, says Selena Lam. So you should be aware of that. Make sure to avoid it. So I tricked my opponent. He didn't want to exchange queens for some unknown reason. But now um, I'm in fifth place. I'm in fifth place. My draw was a brilliant strategic move. And... I have <laughs> deteriorated to the fifth place, which means right now I'm eyeing the prize. Uh, check. I don't think I'm playing very well. I will be the first to admit it, but now I'm setting a trap. If queen takes g2, then knight h4. And now he's setting a trap, and I nearly fell for it. So if knight h4, then bishop takes c2 is very good. But this guy... <laughs> These guys are pretty tricky. For... Uh, in, Somehow my my easiest oh my goodness I made a boo boo I made a blunder I made a blunder a big blunder Okay, well, then I know what's on the menu. We will need to do some flagging. I dropped to seventh, which means I'm once again in the prices. I have a feeling that this is gonna, this is gonna change a lot during the course of the tournament. We might just have to Carlson your way out of a minus three, says thy fat bat. And that is precisely what I'm going to do. And now I have a bishop pointing up towards the black king. That's going to be part one of my strategy. And now I have a queen pointing against his king, threatening bishops g4, maybe. Maybe bishop g4. 
maybe knight d7 first knight d5 knight knight c6 I really, really think I'm in trouble when the chat is just suggesting so much better moves than what I am capable of seeing. <laughs> yeah, no, G5, that would have been a good move. I, I approve. I approve of that move. And now I missed King E6. This is just so sick. He had King E6 and then I'm just two pawns down or something. No. Two pieces down, of course. I mean, ba Magnus basically flagged Gawain, or Gawain flagged himself to some extent. Uh, Marius is saying that I, I wonder if that's what Magnus thought during his game, that I'm just going to flag him. But um, it could be. It could be that. That could be what he thought. Because it was not. Okay. This doesn't look massively impressive for white. It, I'm playing Maziek, a Polish international master. And my position looks solid. Solid as a hammer. Solid as something solid. But on the other hand, he has an extra pawn in the center. And he's really going to say that this is just a little bit better for him because of that pawn. Feels strange to me. Feels very strange. But we will take a look and try to determine whether his hypothesis is accurate. And I'm going to be moving a bit quicker because I have started to lose quite a few games on time. Of course, this is something I'm very used to. Uh, but I, it doesn't mean I don't dislike it anyway. So a little bit quicker and now he's going to take, take and go knight e2. Knight e2 first. Okay. Take, 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 check here. Looks like a pawn to me. I'm going to take it. So we remove his central pawn. And let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Knight c3 I didn't consider. But then I have queen e7. So bishop c5 is the main line when I calculated queen, bishop c5, knight d7. Okay, so far so good. <laughs> I actually missed that he could go knight c1. I thought I was just making a move repetition real quick to gain some time. But no. He goes knight c1, threatening some stuff. I'm going to go here and then he will take on a7. 
He's going to take on a7. I'll go b6. He'll go bishop d2. And then I have then I have queen c2. This isn't looking good for me. This is looking very good for me. I believe this is a winning position for the black pieces. Let's do some pre-moving. Yeah, okay, no more pre-moving. Okay, I'll have to actually win with my extra piece. That was a pretty good game. I think actually I played I played a really good game there. And now I'm playing a Lars Oscar. One of the Norwegian kids. And we're going to play as boring as possible because Lars Oscar is a pretty aggressive player. So we're going to play something boring like rookie one essayed by basically every guy in the world elite. Hammer, do you know any theory in the King's Gambit? No. Basic. I, probably I know some, but. Now we're going to play the Rook E2 move, which Carlson played against Karyakin in the match. And now we will play Knight to D2 and then Knight to E4. And we have an advantage in the center with our uh, D5 pawn. And then we go g3, restricting the knight on f5. But now I need to develop this guy somehow. We need to get this bishop out. Let's exchange. Hmm. It's not an orthodox way of getting the bishop out, but I think it will do the job. This knight is really, really out of squares. Maybe he'll go d5, d5. Maybe I can go d5, knight c3, and the knight still lacking some squares. d5, I can go check, I can take. Taking is probably pretty good. Take, take, exchange. Bishop f4. Do I just win a pawn? No. It's close to just winning a pawn. Okay, knight c3, d4. Take, 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 checkmate. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. Bishop F6. Maybe I can take. No, then rook E8. Maybe I can take rook e8, rook e1, takes, 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 rook b4. I'm going to do that. Because Oscar just, he, his, some complicated stuff, he, he's pretty good. But just get into a technical end game, and I think I can outplay these kids. So I'm going to take this one, see what happens.
B6 rookie one. That is the uh, Carlson Karyakin World Championship match game. Linolam asks, is this the most boring opening line? And that is, I can confirm, this is incredibly boring chess. But it works for me. It works for Carlson. Anything that works for Carlson is, I'm going to give it the, a stamp of approval. Maybe he had king f8 there. I was being slightly inaccurate. Yeah, he thinks he's being clever putting the rook here. But really what's happening is that his rook is just terrible. And he needs to go back. Now I'm getting a good, good rook ending. Probably. Just in time. And with two queens, I am capable of giving checkmate. And it's a checkmate, so it's also hammer time. I, I think that was a pretty good game. I'm getting tough opponents again. I'm getting some tricky, tricky opponents. I'm number five. Number Okay, I'm playing this really quickly, but really I have no idea what's going on. I think this is some kind of pawn sacrifice you're supposed to do. Uh, but what do I know? The problem, of course, is that I'm just a pawn down. Feels like a bit of a problem, but I thought this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, no, this is a bit of a problem. Now he's threatening knight f4 as well as knight f3. Yeah, now this was just a terrible opening. So let's try to trick him. Queen h4 is a good start. And then here. This feels like a position where you could come up with something to make your opponent nervous. But I don't think rook d1 was it. The problem is, he also has so many pieces protecting his king. So the only way I can do something to make him nervous is sacrificing that piece. And he really let me make that sacrifice. So clearly he's not nervous about it. Which probably means I should resign. But I'm not going to. Going to play on and hope for the best. But it's not looking good. It's 
it's looking actually very, very bad. That wasn't even a real game. He just won because I played such a bad opening. But on the other hand, maybe I will drop to seventh place. So there's something good going on. Okay, now he's just being very good. That's a very tricky move. I'll let him checkmate in case he has a stream with a catchphrase, just like me. Hammer versus Carlson World Championship match would be epic, says Isolda. Yeah, I'm not sure epic is the word. It would be very, very strange. Very strange. I'm number six, which thankfully is not the first loser it's just the second loser <laughs> okay I slightly delayed I forgot to take black's bishop in this reasonably normal opening line and instead I played bishop d2 and for this reason the move knight e4 um, bishop d2 is not a very good move so I need to scramble against Archimedes, my opponent. But he made a mistake just after my mistake. And I would think I can capture something and get away with it. Anton has already volunteered to be my second. I'm a bit of a cheapskate, so if, if you're gonna do it for free, Anton, I I'm I'm definitely game. What's this joke about ninety seventh place? asks Alfredo, and uh, there's no joke. It's actually very very serious. This is the uh, prime number prize tournament, in which everyone finishing. On a prime number uh, within the top hundred uh, will get a prize so that means me getting fourth place would be not very good me getting um, I need to checkmate this guy and then I can finish my thought uh, me getting um, the The seventh place, on the other hand, no, wait, seventh? I, I forgot my thinking. Check, check, wins a queen. Check, check, wins nothing. So I'll go for this one. Apparently, the uh, quest of getting on my World Championship match team against uh, Carlsen has already begun. And my team already has two members, HMW Life and Anton Squared. So that is, in case I make it, I'm making, I have the, the team ready. I'm going to do a little trick and he's going to stop it and I'm going to renew it. And now he's going to fall for it, but he has E3 in the end. 
So actually, I made a blunder, not him. But then he repeated the blunder by resigning the game, and winning that game gave me sixth place, and that's not very good. So、uh, it's twenty-two minutes left of the tournament. It's starting to get to the point where I'm gonna need to be a bit strategic about the results I try to get. So at some point, I might start offering draws, and before I do that, I'm gonna need a quick poll of the chat whether offering draws would be unethical, because I don't want to do anything unethical. If draws are gonna put me in a prize position, shouldn't I be offering them? That is the question I ask of you. Of course, it's ethical," says Shipahola Balas. I probably butchered that name. On the other hand, wouldn't I win the tournament if I just offered a draw in every single game? I would get so many points, right? But then I would play somebody who would not accept my draw offers, and then my whole plan would kind of be ruined. You should be optimizing for price. Yes, of course I should. That's yeah. That wasn't really my question, but it was whether or not draw offers are. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. Didn't you write the, an article about how the draw offer should be abolished? Says Fredo. Yes, that is correct. But on the other hand, nobody listens to me. So, as of yet, the draw offer has not been abolished, and、um, you may accuse me of being a hypocrite. But I can live with that. Okay, so this is a kind of weird pawn structure, but I'm my pawns are really advanced, and I should not have allowed him to go with the queen here. Maybe I should stop it, and then I go c five, and my pawns are pretty tricky guys. Advancing up the board. Hmm. That is a free pawn, no? I'm gonna take it. What's the worst thing that could happen? Yeah, losing on purpose, I cannot do. Optimizing by losing on purpose—that I think is—that's a big no-no for me. Queen f four.
Okay, this looks like a pretty good rook ending to my eyes. Pretty good rook ending. Okay, so I'm in sixth place again. So I, I really should try to move up, I think. Because if I go up, I have the first, second, third, all giving prices. Uh, whereas if I stay on my current score, I'm just seventh, ninth, and fifth. That's also pretty good numbers, actually. Basically, everything except my current placing would be fine and is acceptable. Okay, so uh, my opponent has played the uh, Benke Gambit, and I have played very strangely to put my knight on g3. But having done that, I'm thinking maybe I should uh, go h4 to pretend to attack. Or maybe I should have stopped that move. That would have been good. I shouldn't be allowing this stuff. Oh, well. So now f4 in the air, maybe h4. Let's go h4, see what happens. And then bishop here. I'm, I'm thinking I'm pretty good in this position. HMW life is not really being a good sport in the chat. He's betting hammer makes fourth place, which would be the absolute worst worst placement to get and uh, so yeah i'm hoping you're wrong but i'm seriously entertaining the uh possibility that you're gonna be spot on because that is just my kind of luck but on the other hand everybody claims to have such bad luck Marius says, the way White has played this opening has been so confusing, but so good. I am happy you enjoy my um, freestyling, essentially, is what this is. Freestyle openings. And now people are complaining which is the worst non-prime that is something i really think you will only see in a chess twitch chat but i might be wrong i guess gamers can be pretty nerdy as well Hammer playing like Alpha Zero, says uh, I'm not playing that quickly, though. I don't want my opponents to get the idea that get it into their heads that they have the option of flagging me. Because then I'm going to have a tough couple of games. I want to go e5, so he should put his rook on e5 to prevent me. No, he goes f5 that I'm going to take. And we get another rook ending. Uh, with a significant amount of pawns up. But actually, it's not that easy. Uh, should be easy, but 
I'm thinking too much. I'm overthinking things. I'm thinking what can go wrong instead of thinking I'm going to win this easily. So he can go king f4. That was not one of the most dangerous moves. I'm going to get a pawn ending with a queen extra. And pawn endings with an extra queen uh, with an extra queen are usually pretty valuable. Fifth place. That is excellent news. Excellent news with fifth place. Should I be playing quickly to make That is an unusual move. I don't think that is among the highly regarded moves in this position. So getting this kind of doubled pawn structure is always going to be a problem for the bishop. And I think my strategy of blocking the bishop out of play has worked pretty well. Pretty well. I think you're best served getting as many points as possible, says that Thomas so I'm gonna listen to you and I'm gonna blame you if something goes wrong so I'm just gonna play, try to play good chess and get as many points as I can and now there's some pressure coming from all edges of the board this is actually kind of tricky I'm going to want to play b4 to kick the queen out because the queen was pretty okay anton d squared is criticizing thomas's strategy saying that i'm way behind the top four i'm actually 10 points behind fourth place but that also means that also means anton that if i do manage to win a couple of games then i will be guaranteed fifth place so i will not risk going on to place number four so i i think it's a good strategy just get as many points as possible and see what happens and it's certainly a pretty fair strategy. I actually have a pretty good idea here in this line. I'm not going to play my good idea. I'm going to do something boring. This seriously looks like one of my bullet games. This is basically the opening I always play in bullet. <laughs> it's pretty good for white. Not much happening over here. And then over here you have got some space advantage. Maybe I'm not better. I'm going to put a trap. It's a trap. I haven't actually watched Star Wars. I'm going to just look at the chat reaction to that. 
there's not a lot of us left, but yeah. But I I know some of the quotes. I know. It's a trap. So I'm hoping for bishop takes b2, queen takes b2, knight e5, queen takes e5. Winning a piece. The chat going crazy at the lack of Star Wars education. Well, crazy is a bit overstating it, but. It's very risky allowing him to take this one. Okay, I'll just play it safe. Chicken move, queen d4, protecting the pawn, threatening knight f4, hitting the queen and the pawn. How often does Jon Ludwig stream, asks GM moves. You can see the full schedule on my, um, if you go to Twitch, slash GMJLH, slash um, events slash events and there you see uh, a full uh, list of my upcoming streams and my plans and so on and so forth and I'm also pretty active on Twitter so uh, whenever I'm uh, going live on a stream I'll make sure to tweet about it Ooh, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I might be in trouble, actually. I was a bit too passive, and now I'm in trouble. He can take on d3. And I'm just losing a pawn, and this pawn on h3 is such a strong piece. So I should have done something with my knight to get rid of this pawn. I thought I had things under control, but now I'm just... I'm just losing. <sighs> yeah. I'm hoping this works into some kind of making third place plan but I'm I guess I doubt it okay this is going to be interesting I'm trying to provoke him into exchanging queens and then I'm kind of hoping that I will be able to queen my pawns before him and I'm not entirely sure about the strategy but now I am Three and a half minutes left. Two minutes left. It's one more game. I'm in. I'm in fifth place. And I have a five point lead. And my closest competitor is Crypto Chess. I'm playing the guy. I'm playing the guy who is my closest competitor. 
So now I'm just going to uh, make a very, very long game. I'm going to make sure to use all my time to prevent him from getting any more points. And that will make me That will be good enough in the standings, I think. I can't really tell whether this is good for me or bad for me. But I'm thinking the threat against F2 is pretty strong. At this point, I might want to play for a win. How am I doing? I'm still in fifth place. And Crypto is one point behind me. One point behind me. So now he's letting... <laughs> this is so tricky. I was considering letting the time run out. And now he's the one doing it. Because he just blundered into a losing position. So Crypto here, he's going to just let time run out because there's only 20 seconds left of the tournament. He's dead lost, but if he, okay. That was actually pretty polite of him. He didn't, no, he resigned and put me in fourth place. <laughs> I shouldn't have checked him on H3. Wow, that is so sick. He didn't need to resign. He actually would have kept his rating points had he not resigned because then the game would have been uh, aborted in progress. But as it went, he resigned, which gave me enough points to go to fourth place. So I am officially <laughs> the first loser. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to put out the standing. That was wow. That was so, so sick. So if he wanted to keep his rating points, he could have just let the time run out and the game would have been aborted. Um, but instead, he chose to be a pretty decent sport. I mean, he had made a mistake in the opening and he was very lost. Um, but in the process, he pushed me up to the fourth place. And um, yeah, fourth place is not a, um, a prime number. So yeah. Literally everyone in the chat saw that coming, says Anton. <laughs> Oh, that is, that is kind of funny. The guy in first place gamed the tournament, says Anton. So I might get third. So there might be some good news heading my way. I had 24 games. I played pretty well, I would say. And I made some very nice wins against very high rated players. Uh, Imre, the 2700, finished in 7th place. That's the price for him. And, well, he, ha he didn't have the best of tournaments. He lost to me twice. So that's going to be uh, a nice compensation for that. What is wrong with non-prime numbers? Ask uh, KDF man. And the problem is that this was a special prize tournament in which only pro prime number finishers uh, get a prize. Uh, so with my uh, fourth, fourth place, uh, I'm not getting a prize. And that's a bit depressing after having been on the fifth place spot just seconds before the tournament's closed uh, the first place finisher may have been sandbagging to get a 300 rating and then win all his games 
So he might get uh, punished for that, but we'll we will leave that to the uh, chess.com fair play team uh, to decide. And Anton has a very nice uh, definition of sandbagging. He lost a bunch of games to get a low rating so that when he played this tournament, he would play all the low rated players. So, but we will leave it to the chess.com team to decide whether this was uh, a violation of the fair play rules. Uh, Isolda, what do you think about uh, what the drama that happened at the World Blitz Championship where Inaikiev tried to steal a win? Yeah, I, 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 I met uh, Ernesto uh, a couple of times this year uh, playing in the FIDE Grand Prix series and he seemed like a very nice guy. So I was very surprised and uh, I think when he gets kind of some perspective, I think he will realize that he was in the wrong. Crypto Chess said in the chat, Oh, I shouldn't have resigned to Hammer. I denied him money. Yeah, you might have, but you might also have given me the 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 third place so you never know you just try to win as many games as possible and you hope for the best that was really dirty says Selena Lam. well we'll see what the uh, the consequences are ah and white dancing rockstar has caught up to the fact that uh, number one is not a prime and that is correct number one does not win one of the prime prizes but they had a special prize uh, for the first uh, for the first place finisher so uh, prime numbers in top 100 and first prize uh, first first placed guy gets uh, gets the points Anton says, as my second, he'll uh, help prepare me for finishing 97th in the next in the next event. So uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I think you're the right guy for that, Anton. I can go down to number 97. So no, 97 is Falhan Ahmed. He is the uh, last guy. Uh, with the prime price finish of 97. But I think that was an interesting event. Shout out to uh, Bigfoot, who is the uh, organizer and sponsor he has been doing his own stream with Danny Ranch. Uh, so I recommend checking that out at chess.com slash TV. Uh, and that's going to be uh, all from me. Uh, I want to give a reminder to everybody about my next upcoming streams. Uh, for the Norwegian audience, I'm doing a stream tomorrow at 5 p.m. Uh, looking at the Tata Steel games. And we have a lot to talk about. Uh, Magnus blundered a piece today and ended up winning. So that's gonna, I, I assume, uh, be a, a main focus of tomorrow's stream. Uh, and then we have uh, the next English stream will be on Wednesday. There's the chess.com um streamers arena king challenge uh and i will be playing uh that one i finished first uh on the very uh, first edition then uh last time i was fourth so now i'm gonna have to strike back from the poor uh, second week 
Uh, Malchus asks, uh, regarding tomorrow's stream, will you be streaming on GMJLH? Um, yes, I will. But every time I stream on the Chesscom No uh, user, you can be assured that I will be hosting the stream on my own channel. So anytime I'm on Twitch, I will be, be hosting the stream. So GMJLH is the uh, only uh, place you need to follow to, to get my, my streams. Uh, Anton is confirming that I will be adding a blindfold bullet stream on the 30th of January. And that is affirmative. Uh, I'm going to log off and then I'm going to create an event on Twitch so that it's properly official that I will do the blindfold bullet stream. Uh, thank you everybody for uh, watching. Uh, everybody have a nice Tata Steel rest day in case you celebrate those kinds of things. I certainly do. And, um, but I'll be back for a um, Norwegian uh, summary stream of the first half uh, featuring Magnus Carlsen. Until next time, everybody. Bye-bye.